Come on, Alan, pick up your damn phone. Finally. Didn't Claire give you the messages? But you know what? Never mind. I don't have time for this. Look, I am getting sucked into something so ugly down here. Breland has hooked himself up with the mob in Springfield. Carlos Sandoval, Johnny Machada. No, I don't want any part of this. I... You know, I gotta, I gotta go. Don't call me. I'll call you. Aha! I'll tell you what, I should have been a private detective. Why? Well, you disappeared right after dinner, and I thought to myself, now, if I were Olivia, where would I be? And here you are. Oh, hmm? I just had to take a walk after that, that <laughs> trout almond. Oh, yeah. Hey, hmm. did you see the stars? They seem a little closer here than they do in Springfield, don't they? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I love to listen to the tree frogs sing and smell the night jasmine blooming and uh, I don't know, it's just my senses come alive here. You know, who would have ever guessed that I would start falling for this place, huh? Not too long ago I wanted it to sink into the sea. Ten million bucks. What? Ten million bucks for your thoughts. I figure they're worth a lot more than a penny. You know, it's just work stuff, that's oh, all. Oh, no, 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 now, see, we can't have that. We're here, we're here on a beautiful, romantic, tropical place, and it's you and me and your husband, so you can't be thinking about work. <sighs> hmm? I just... I want it all to go away, you know? I just want it to be us for five minutes. I mean, what if this is as good as it gets, Josh? What if I lose you? You won't lose me. You've just been working too hard, that's all. But this project is really important. Well, I know that, but see, at some point we have to ask ourselves what's more important, the project or us. Now listen, I have an idea. Don't, don't say no too quick, okay? But somebody told me about an island not far from here that's got a beautiful reef a couple of wrecks there. It's supposed to be great for diving. Now, why don't you and I play some hooky from work? Yes. And yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that was easy. <laughs> this will be sort of the, the honeymoon that we never had. To justice. Here's hoping yeah. we bust Dituro down to dog catch. Yeah, good thing you turned out not to be Miguel Santos. We'd want to be saddled with that for a half hour. I was so sure it was right. How'd you figure out that was that cop, son? Oh, I had a little help from a higher power. Forget Ross, I taught her everything she knows. Hey, Buster, you relied on my feminine intuition. Ah, oh, what does that mean? Blake, Frank, and David Grant had a private detective agency together. No kidding. Yeah, well, I figured that. There had to be a reason that Gus wanted to destroy Danny's life. And you're right. Hey. So it must have been tough, huh? Turning in your boss like that. Well, you guys had it tougher. You know, I should have checked on those dental records. I just, uh... I knew something was wrong with that body. I just didn't think that Gus could be like that. I just hope it doesn't get you in, you know, too much trouble. Well, I'm on maternity leave in a few days anyway. Good. That's right. And the sooner you get away, the better. The man is nothing but a reckless vigilante. And Danny, the fact that your dad killed his father did not give him the right to falsify evidence against you. Sure is it a terminal sucker, isn't it? Oh. Terminal blood sucker. It's immoral. You know, it just goes to show you that the system does work. Forget that. The system is out to get you. That's why they give badges to Gus and his kind. The only reason that you and Danny and Robbie have a chance to be a family again because you didn't play by the rules. And that was the way to do it. Gus Ituro is not the system. And tonight's not about bitterness, folks. It's a celebration. So I propose a toast to Danny and Michelle. Good. Danny and Michelle. May they finally live happily ever after. Let's, let's hope so. 
Let's keep our fingers crossed and, uh... My lawyer isn't celebrating. What's on your mind? It will probably turn out okay, but you're not yet home free. Why not? There's no body. Oddly enough, you don't need a body to be convicted of murder. What are you thinking, boss? Well, even if there's a mistrial, they could bring these charges again. Or they could continue with this trial and simply tell the jury to take into consideration the falsification of evidence, in which case you could be found guilty as charged, guilty of a lesser count, or you could be acquitted. I vote for that. Yeah, yeah and you put Ituro on trial. Would they do that? Oh, he could probably find a way out of that. Of course yeah, well, the guy's a dirtbag. Oh, thank you. You guys like him, they never pay up. So the more I see cops, the less I trust them. That's right. Present company excluded. Yeah. Of course. <clears throat> of course. Let's see now. The, uh, Harley, my sister, was the one who um, figured out that missing section of tape, and Harley was also the one who got Peterson to testify right. that Gus right. Toro was the one who asked him to edit out the gunshot. Right. Right. So here, here. See, that's eventually what nailed him. That's exactly right. To Harley. Yeah. To Harley. Harley. To Harley. Harley. To Harley. All right. Yeah. Mm. Tired? Disillusioned, I guess. Well, he, he is what he is. Yeah, he's an arrogant pain in the neck, a jerk, but a bad guy. You know something? We should be proud that you stopped him. <laughs> so, what, once this is all over, you uh, come back to Inferno? I'm not sure yet. You know, the club hours are really lousy. By the time I get home at night, I'm so sleepy. I get up in the morning, and she and Robbie are off already in the park or wherever. And I really want to spend some more time with them. That'd be great for all of you. You know, there's no reason to come back. Jeno's doing fine. It's good hands. Hey, don't get any ideas. It's still Danny's club. So, uh, are you keeping your nose clean? Hey, either you trust me to run the place or you don't. Tony, I don't trust Carlos. I don't trust Johnny Machado. Have they been around? I don't know. You know, I'm back there in the office most of the time. Well, if they show up, you let me know. Also, now I gotta report to you if I want to wipe my nose. That's not what I said. You, you know, what... Danny, either you're in or you're out. You can't have it both ways. You gave me the what? keys to the place, right? And you told me to run it. That's what I'm doing. You know, don't jerk me around, Danny. All right? If Vreeland isn't guilty, well then, it won't matter. And if he is, I don't want you or Reva in the line of fire. What is it? If uh, you have a minute. Of course. Um, no, go, 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 go. Yeah. Reva and I have girl stuff to do. No? Sure. Yeah. So, what's our next step? You're married to a pillar of integrity. I know, I know, and I love him for it, but he's wrong about Vreeland. Well, we'll just have to get him some proof. Although Scarface is probably on to us by now, but we can maybe find someone else to go down the rusty oh, anchor and make careful. contact. You've got to be careful. Richard's right. I mean, it can't look like he's going after Vreeland because of the presidential Well, race. you know, there's got to be a weak link between the whole Olivia, Edmund, and Vreeland connection. Peter Vreeland is paying a fortune for ads for the popular vote. It's paying off. Born politician. The latest polls show I'm ahead. We haven't begun to fight. In all due respect, we're running out of time. Uh, of course, uh, you could call to have the elections postponed. Don't even think about it, Dax. I'm not going to abuse my former power. Next, you'll have me invoking martial law like Edmund. If we lose, we lose. So be it. That's unthinkable. That's democracy. To hell with democracy! You know, if we were just five more minutes with that guy and we would have found something out. Hello? 
Uh, uh, look, you know, if you still think I'm a cop, I'm just gonna hang up the phone. Really? So you want to sell out your uh, pal Vreeland? Yeah, I can set that up. Sure. Okay. Look, I want you to call me tomorrow during business hours on this number, okay? He says he knows who I am and he wants to talk to me. Come in! You want the phone? Yeah, someone called um, with information for the commission. What? What's with the look? You know how much I admire the way you throw yourself into things. But darling, you and Riva, you're going to have to play by the rules from now on. Hey. You're doing a good job at the club. I don't need you to tell me that. Tony, I'm not worried about the club. I'm worried about you. Well, I got no problems. And I will, I, I will if I don't get back to work, all right? Congratulations, all right? Give up Robbie a besito for me stream, okay? All right, I'll see everybody. Be careful, huh? All right. Danny, is, is Tony okay? Yeah, sure. He's fine. He, yeah. just, um, he just misunderstood something that Danny said. He, he took it as criticism. That's my brother. Never wants any help. You don't think that he's going to be tempted to get back into the business, do you? No. Well, not if he likes breathing. Kelly, let's look at some Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's hungry, Danny. And Carlos knows how to set up a feast. I keep thinking about that photo. A little boy in his cub's cap. A oh, kid and his dad. I mean, come on, Frank. You can understand what it would do to him when he saw his dad killed. Look, sis, I went after Mom's killer, you know, but I wouldn't go after his kids. Yeah, but Brent Marion didn't have kids. And, and Gus couldn't go after Miguel because Miguel was already dead. Harley, are you trying to justify what Arturo did to Danny? No, I'm just... Trying to understand it, I guess. You know, I'm tired. I gotta get home. And okay. Here, Philip's here, looking here, after go. Zach. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Well, watch, watch the look, I'll drop you Oh, no, I have my car, but thank you. Hey, um, Jimmy Trevor, you, you call me when you get in, all right? Okay, stop being such a big brother. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <clears throat> Probably. You don't think that Arturo would take this out on Harley for messing up the plan? The guy's warped enough, and certainly he could switch his need for revenge to her, yeah. He's hiring to protect her. What? If she figures out we're trying to protect her, she'll blow a fuse. Well, it's too bad for her. She needs protecting. Just don't overcrowd her, right? Hey guys, romantic evening, huh? Hi there. Nice, uh, nice night. Hi. We're headed to the beach. <laughs> Not to swim. Dad. Hey, guess what? We're gonna go take a few days and, and scuba dive in San Ramora. Very cool. Yeah. While Good I'm for here. You. Well, we could uh, put it off for a short while, We're I guess. See that but I. You guys, anyway. I mean, I promise to give Mara the grand tour. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and mm. you know, by the time we get back, you'll know the island so well, you'll be able to show your dad around yourself. Sounds like a date to me. <laughs> okay. Will you excuse me a minute, sis? Yeah. So. So? You and Sam seem to be hitting it off. Dad, we're just friends. Thank you. You're welcome. But I may ask you to return the favor. I didn't bring Ma down here to have her cozy up to dear old dad. Yeah, I figured good to see you happy. I know Tony uh, shook up your confidence there for a little while. Yeah, well, I shook up his. I made sure he knew that I was coming down here with Sam and that we were going to have the greatest time, and I, I think it really bothered him. I, I almost expected him to hop on the next plane and come down here. What would happen if he did? I really don't care what Tony does anymore. 
I don't give a damn about what Danny thinks, or Ray, or any of them. Or I, I don't care about Mara Lewis either. The blonde? She was there? No, no, she's in San Cristobal with, with Sammy Spencer. She gets to you. The hell she does. The day I showed up here from Chicago, she showed up here, I remember. You brought her in here, a few minutes later, she goes running out, and then you're wearing the face. What face? The one you got on right now. You know, Romeo, just because you and I used to run numbers in Chi-Town when we were like six, doesn't give you the right to be a pain in the butt, all right? Sure it does. I'm doing my job. Your job is to watch my back. That's what I'm doing. With Sandoval and Machado, not Mara Luz. Okay, but she's more dangerous. Yeah, I just, I just wish they didn't want to launder money through Lewis Construction. The daughter dumped you. The old man fired you. This is payback. Whoa, whoa. First of all, I dumped Mar Lewis. Second of all, I made Josh Lewis fire me. And he's a fair guy. He never did anything wrong. I just, I, I hate to make trouble for him. Make up your mind, Tone. You gotta have the stomach for this, because if you don't, these guys will smell it like sharks smell blood in the water and you know what happens to the weakest link. Yeah. Either you're in or you're out. You can't have it both ways. Are you... Are you seriously worried about Harley? I know Gus is a nutcase, but... Gus? Well, he was caught at revenge since he was a kid. Now he's a rogue cop of the worst. I think Harley should definitely watch out. You know, maybe I need to drive over there to make sure that she got home okay. You know? Leave her alone. All of you. Stop hovering. She's a trained cop. You know, she can protect herself from just about anything. But you're going to make her crazy. And we all know when Harley goes crazy, nobody wants to be around. Well, maybe we should warn Gus. <laughs> maybe he'll uh, be smart enough and stay away from her. Maybe he won't. We got home, Coop. I'm here with Sam just to make Tony jealous. Well, that's his problem. Sam's or Tony's? Listen, you. Don't be messing with people's feelings. If somebody's gonna get hurt, it's probably gonna be you. Dad, Sam knows where he stands. Well, that's a good thing. Olivia seems a little weird. She is. <laughs> Besides, things have uh, got a little crowded at the palace. Oh, you mean Mom? Yeah. That's why you're going on that little scuba trip. Yeah, even adults have to have fun sometimes. Mm -hmm. So do kids. <laughs> I think Riva had enough on her plate without going after me, but she and Cassie are determined to find something crooked about this harbor project. Is there? You always have to juggle things, Sam. What? <sighs> Others have involved themselves. How? They're just making demands on me I don't know if I can meet, but I don't want you to worry about it. Don't worry about it. Let me guess. Josh doesn't have a clue, does he? <sighs> hey. You know, it's been a long time since the two of us spent time on this island together. That's true. I like it a lot more now than I did. I think it's because I'm rediscovering it through Mara's eyes. She does seem a little more relaxed than I've seen her in a long time. I think you're very good for her. I think so, too. Oh, my. Thank what are you, you my so lady? Thank you so much. How mm. lovely. <laughs> Shall we go to the beach? Good night. Good night. Good night.
Don't do that. You look hypnotized. I can't, I, I can't get anything done. So fly down there and bring her back already. Then we can get back to work. That's what you want to do, so do it. I can't. Then forget about her. But don't let her eat you up like this. Why don't you take a load off? It's been a long day. Can I get you anything? You're in my house. Does that mean that you don't get to sit down? I didn't invite you in. No. But you weren't here, so I won't take it personally. What do you want? Well, either you can sit or I'll stand, so... All right. I want to say congratulations. That's sarcastic, right? No. I'm proud of you. I made you a better cop. A better, braver cop. I just didn't know that I'd be the one to pay the price. And then's the brakes. But you did your job. Without prejudice. Without sentiment. It's good work. Thank you. So, what's going to happen to you now? Oh, I don't know. The, uh, the office in Washington tried to figure that out, but uh, I bet you they kicked me off the bureau. <laughs> Funny thing is, you know, this whole thing started out as a way to take the Santos family down. But at one point, I fell in love with the job. And I'm good at it. I guess the laugh's on me, right? What are you waiting for? The club is still gonna be here when you get back. I got it covered. No, 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 it's way too soon to make a move. She still thinks she owns me. I gotta show her that I don't need her, then she's gonna come back begging. I don't know, man. Looked to me like that dude was moving in for the kill. He's got her down there all by himself. Those warm nights, tropical moon, midnight swims. Whatever, man. I got responsibilities, man. And you also got someone you can trust. That's a good thing. All right, because I got Carlos and Johnny coming at me from one side, and I got Danny and Ray coming at me from the other. No sweat. We'll take care of them. No. I got everything set up just the way I want it. Nobody's going to mess with me. So call me whenever you need, as soon as you hear something, it doesn't matter what time. Okay, of course I will. You enjoy this time with your wife and your son, but keep a low profile with you. Mm -hmm. nice. I will look elsewhere for headlines. You settle down to a nice, normal family oh. life. Oh, normal family. Yeah. Can we have one of those normal family? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Nice. Okay. Uh, don't thank me until the equipment. All right. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. Oh. Well, I guess I need to go to bed. Yeah, very subtle. <laughs> I love you. I love you, too. Oh. Right. Good night, Jen. Night. So you want to uh, go outside and make a wish on the first star that we see? I don't know, honey. I don't feel like tempting fate until this is decided. I think that we are done holding our breath. You do, huh? Yes, and we're going to live our life now. And I want to fill every single moment with joy. 
I... I don't know if I uh, know how to do that. Well, um... Let me show you how to start. The day I met you, one of the very first things you said to me was that you didn't like working with small town cops because we get too involved with people. Hey, right, that's true. And the whole time, everything you did was personal, all of it. Well, maybe now you understand. No, I'm mad as hell. You kept me in the dark. You betrayed my trust. Trust is very important to me. Well, you know, we all make mistakes. All right, so say I would have told you. I would have asked you to take yourself off the case. Well, I couldn't do that. Then I would have told Chief Franklin. Great. And four years of work would have gone down the drain? It's not work. It was revenge. No. Danny didn't kill your dad. Danny killed his mother. To defend Michelle. Right. And if he had been a normal person with a heart and a conscience, he would have called an ambulance. And he would have told the police everything. But instead, he waits the body down, his mother, and throws her in the lake. Or so he says. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the man that did that to your mother is in a mental institution. So there we have it. We have Danny running around free, making barbecues for all the good citizens and Samaritans of Springfield. And then there's your story. How does that make you feel? You hate him. I hate everybody, okay? I hate everybody that thinks the rules don't apply to them. That solve their problems with guns and bombs and blow a 10-year-old kid's father away in front of a movie theater who's just trying to buy his kid an ice cream. That's how it happened. He was a very good man. You have a big family? Nope. It's just me and my dad. Your mother? She died. Sorry. When I was five. Sorry. Well, he... He made up for it, though, you know. It cost him. I didn't know that at the time. He used to trade promotions just so he could spend some time with me. He used to ask for the day shift so he could help me with my homework and you know, toss the ball around me in the park in the evenings. All the kids in the neighborhood used to really like him because he was, he was that type of guy. He liked baseball? Oh, it was a religion. In the summers, on his days off, if the Cubs were in town, we were at the ballpark. We used to sit up way up high in the bleachers. He used to say that the view was better, but I, I think it's because he couldn't afford anything else. Mm. This one time, one time we got box seats and I think he must have saved this guy's life or something because he could not do enough for him. Anyway, we're, we're on the first baseline and I'm screaming and hollering and, and suddenly I notice that my dad isn't looking at the field anymore but he's staring at the guy that's in the box next to us and this guy is wearing a white suit and a Panama hat and he's got two kids with him. One of them was about my age. Miguel Santos, Danny and Mick. No, I didn't know that at the time. But I could tell the way that he was looking at them. I just, I knew not to ask. He didn't laugh or joke around with me anymore that day. <laughs> he had such a great laugh. Third inning. Third inning, Ryan Sandberg hits a fly ball right out to the stands, right towards us. So Danny and I would get our mitts ready. And Miguel Santos, barehanded. And he looks at my dad and he tosses the ball to me. And my dad made me give the ball back. He said, there are some people that you never want to owe. I'll never forget that. Your dad worked for the organized crime unit in Chicago? Yeah, 
then he had the Santos in his territory, and that man was this close to taking that whole family down. I guess at the end of the day, he was just a little too good at his job. You saw it. Yeah, we were coming out of a movie theater. It was a Saturday afternoon, about four o'clock. And I was, I was high from the film. I, I, I wanted to be Luke, Luke Skywalker. And there was an ice cream truck parked at the curb. And my dad, he, he gave me some money. And he said, uh, he said, keep the change with a wink, you know. And I ran towards the ice cream truck. And something made me look back at him. And I saw that man from the ballpark. And he smiled. And then he... And he raised his gun and he took aim at my dad. But it was like a game, you know, it was like a... Like a little kid's game because he had smiled at me. And then my dad was on the ground. And everybody was screaming. And I heard the sirens. And I tried to get over towards my dad, but a cop stopped me. And there was another cop there, too. I must have been a friend of my father's. Because he said, Nikki, don't. Nikki, don't. Don't look. And they took me away. And that was the last time I saw him. You were 10 years old. They gave him a hero's funeral. You know? they, they treated him like a hero. I walked behind the casket with two of his friends, and they... The bagpipes were playing, and there was a folded flag, and a gun salute. Yeah. Then a, <clears throat> a, a, a bugle played taps, and it was over. But it wasn't over for you. You know, my... My father, his whole life, all, all the man wanted was justice. And that's really all that I want. Justice. And to this day, no justice. Sky's clear. No, it's not that. What is it? Richard. What? What is it? What? Tell me. I'm not pregnant.
dream. <sighs> Why don't you tell me about it? No. No, I don't want to. Well, that's scary, huh? Woolly animals with big, sharp teeth. I just... I dreamed I lost you. Yeah. Yeah. If I have to leave town or something, you know, I'll call you. Okay. All right. You got your cap. Yeah. Good luck with the baby, everything. Then maybe sometime, uh, maybe we'll work together. Yeah. yeah. Crazier things have happened. Yeah. Take care of yourself. You too, Gus. 